Barbie or Oppenheimer? Oh, Barbie just for the day Barbie right now. Oppenheimer. We're going to boat. We're dressed the part, too. Yeah, we have to go home, change, come back, watch Oppenheimer. Barbie or Oppenheimer? Oh my god, we just watched Oppenheimer. And Oppenheimer was crazy. Was Barbie. Barbie was a party for sure. Oppenheimer. All the way. Historically, for us Americans, that's a very huge achievement. Barbie or Oppenheimer? Ken. <laughs> And today we have our own double feature of CBC News senior entertainment reporter Eli Glasner and senior entertainment writer Jackson Weaver with their thoughts on Barbenheimer. Now, Jackson, obviously there is a lot of excitement. It's uh -huh. not often that these, you know, two big films get released and hyped like this on the same day. I have seen marketing for all, both of these movies absolutely everywhere. This must be a marketer's dream. I mean, this is absolutely, as you said, a marketer's dream. This is something that is really a strange thing to happen. I was on the show, I think, about a week ago. We were talking about how blockbusters are struggling, and part of that reason is seasonal clustering, trying to shove all these movies into this window between May and August. And not only is this shoved into a window, this is shoved on the same day. So this really shouldn't work as well as it is working, but because of how different these two movies are, how strange it is to kind of pair them up and do a Barbenheimer day. People are just running with it. They're loving it. <laughs> this is something we actually saw try and have artificially happened with Megan and uh, Chucky movies, but this is something that we've never seen before. Uh, yeah, Eli, on this scale, how does it compare to past campaigns in various summer blockbusters? It's, it's double of any other campaign. I mean, the best you can hope for is the audience chomping at the bit to see one film. But the fact that you have people, we know there are people buying tickets for both and trying to do that double feature. And the amazing thing is, remember, this is a competition. This is Warner Brothers versus Universal. And so these studios are not working together. But the irony is, by competing against each other, I think in a way they very much helped each other because, as Jackson said, it's such a delicious contrast, those two opposite ends of the cinematic spectrum, and now those theaters are full again. Uh -huh. Well, then people have to make a decision this weekend unless they want to spend <laughs> countless hours in the theater. So, Jackson, uh -huh. let's get your take on uh, Oppenheimer. What did you think? I mean, I love countless hours in the theater, but Oppenheimer <laughs> is fantastic. I mean, we see these, these truly, truly real facts going into a movie in a way that we don't often see in biopics. This is based on a 600-page book, and almost everything we see is factual. Harold Stimson really did choose to bomb, not bomb Kyoto because he vacationed there. That thing with the apple and the poison in Oppenheimer that you'll see really did happen. But the depiction by Killian Murphy of J. Robert Oppenheimer is the most truthful thing, the way he grapples with his humanity. Take a look, take a listen to how he embodies that character. Yes, the theory will take you only so far. I don't know if we can be trusted. And that, that struggling with himself continues to a second half of the movie that deals with his pillorying by the American government and ends with a bang out ending, something that will blow your mind at the end that has a commentary on our own apocalyptic futures. All right, that seems like an intense experience. Uh -huh. What did you think, Eli? <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. I mean, this movie is probably not what a lot of people are expecting. Yes, the center of the film is this massive fireball reaching to the heavens, but much of the rest of the film is the story of first J. Robert Oppenheimer becoming interested in science and quantum physics and then rallying the great minds of America and parts of Europe to build this bomb. And then it's it's like project management and the Man trying to marshal the scientist isn't just Oppenheimer, also Matt Damon as the general, who, much like you know, Killian Murphy, has an amazing performance, but a very different kind of character. Let's take a look. Why? Why? How about because this is the most important thing that ever happened in the history of the world? You're the great improviser. He is the great improviser. There's a lot of improvising. Yes, there is an, a remarkable explosion in the middle, but then much of the movie is about the aftermath and Oppenheimer himself struggling with the burden of what he created, the lives that were lost, and really finding a way to live with that decision. So it's explosive acting, but it may not be entirely what part of the audience expects. Uh -huh. Well, if we're talking about Barbenheimer, we need to talk about the movie Barbie. Uh -huh. Switching pace now, Jackson. Other <laughs> side of things. 
Uh, what were the highlights for you? I mean, unfortunately, there weren't a ton of highlights to me. This was a this is a kind of corporate infused movie made by Mattel, and there are great questions about femininity, about the patriarchy, but I don't think that it has the energy to answer the questions it raises. I don't know if it's there. I think it's corporate inspired. I don't know, Eli, if you if you think too differently. I think, in a way, Greta Gerwig tried to say something about feminism now and tried to subvert the dolls. Mattel, this is the Ken doll inspired by Ryan Gosling. <laughs> and Gosling, not Barbie, not Margot Robbie, is the best thing about this uh -huh. film. A Ken doubting his own place in the universe and a Ken that sings. Take a look. Oh, I, I have feelings that I can't explain. Driving me insane. All my life been so polite. Cause I'm just kidding. Anywhere else I'd be tame. Is it my destiny to live and die a life of blonde fragility? Hilarious and absurd. That is when Barbie is at its best. All right, I think I know the answer to this, <laughs> but who wins the, the battle? Jackson, Eli? Oppenheimer wins this battle, but Barbie has a fantastic thing to offer others. Uh, Eli? Yeah, I think Oppenheimer is the best film, but Barbie is going to paint the box office hot pink. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks both of you. <laughs> Lots of busy weekend for many folks. That's mm -hmm. Eli and Jackson. Thank you very much. Pleasure.